three, two, one. Welcome to the Mix Zone by Infront X Lab. On this podcast, we chat with sports and innovation leaders from around the globe, talking about everything from the newest technologies to major trends affecting our industry. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we're Infront X Lab, the innovation branch of digital media company Infront X. We help sports and entertainment organizations gain the upper hand with innovation and bring them closer to cutting edge technologies, covering all sports related industries from data to content and everything in between. Amarov Savir, marketing manager at the lab and host of this podcast. Today we have a special edition of the Mix Zone. We're joined by Jorg Polzer, VP of Strategic Communications at Infront Sports and Media, and Dr. Stefan Siegrist of the Think Tank Wire. The two organizations recently joined forces to attempt and answer a question many of us have probably asked ourselves at one point or another. What will the future of sports look like? Technology has rapidly advanced over the past few decades, allowing us to enjoy the sports we love in new, exciting ways. Whether it's via augmented reality, improved viewing quality, new gadgets to track our levels of fitness, or simply using social media and a growing sense of transparency in sports to feel closer to our favorite athletes. With all these new opportunities, we like to say that the future is here. But frankly speaking, the future of sports has the potential of surpassing our wildest dreams. Infront Sports and Media and Wired try to envision how the future of sports may look in the new book, Brave New Sport. The book explores the meaning and functions of sport and envisions what sport may look like in 20 to 30 years' time, including bold predictions and scenarios around the tokenization of sporting events, human enhancement, and viewing experiences, just to name a few. Jorg, Stefan, it's a pleasure to have both of you with us on the Mix Zone. Pleasure on our side. Thank you, Merov. Yeah, since this is a podcast and our audience can only hear us, I want to make sure they understand who is who from the get-go. So, gentlemen, I'd love it if you could each present yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. Stefan, we'll start with you, if that's okay. Yeah, um, so my name is Stefan. I'm uh, responsible for WIRE, which is a think tank that uh, is existing for over 12 years. So we're actually already dinosaurs in the world of all the new labs. But um, since our beginning, the mission was basically to understand the future in a broader context. So WIRE actually stands for a web for interdisciplinary research and expertise. So our goal was always to have a broader perspective. So on the one hand, and we're not only talking about sports, but many other industries um, that are defined by, of course, technological progress. But then again, um, it is embedded in an economic environment and the economy is embedded in society and we have ecological issues. And um, we have been stepping away from a linear way of making projections, basically saying, well, there's one development, there's a technology, and as a consequence, this is happening. So we're trying always to look at different perspectives. And this probably comes also from my background as a molecular biologist. I've been working in a lab for some time and as a biologist, you always are confronted with complex systems that you cannot understand and you have so many different influence factors that you need to consider and we basically adopted that kind of um, knowledge to broader senses because uh, for the laboratory work I just wasn't talented enough so I had to find myself another a bit broader spot. Well in this case we're happy that you found your way to this and now we get this book. Um, Jörg a bit about yourself. Yeah hi I'm Jörg. Um... Really pleasure to, to be with you today. Um, I'm, I'm heading the communication team here at Infront. Um, we are, as a company globally, a bit more than a thousand people. We are a sports marketing company that uh, covers all aspects of commercialization of sport. We're also the biggest um, producer of sports content globally. And, and we have you know, a, a wild interest in the future of the sector and, and innovation. And this is why we, we have the pleasure to work with youth guys at, at Infronex Lab um, to really explore the latest uh, trends and, and technologies in the world of sports tech. I'm a, I'm a you know, corporate communicator, um, like from you know, by my heart, let's say, um, doing that for, for over 20 years, but I'm also a sports person and I started to work in this industry um, yeah, also almost like 20 years ago when I worked for um, Germany's largest um, sports portal, Sport One, and I 
by the time, and I think this kind of is a big link to, to what we are doing now, we were very much involved into the future of sport because we were uh, one of the first um, players out there who produced um, mobile content uh, in, in a time where iPhones didn't exist and where it, you know the, the first Java phones came up from, from Japan and uh, we were trying to find out what the best ways uh, for sports uh, uh, yeah, communication and, 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 and journalistic content in sports is. So yeah, it's kind of this project Brave New Sport kind of bridges uh, back to that time. And it's, uh, it's also a testament uh, to my interest in, you know, in, in innovative uh, innovation in sports and in you know, thinking forward. So, so it's right up your alley. And before we delve in really to the behind the scenes of a project like this, Jörg, can you tell us a little bit about the book, about Brave New Sport? So, yeah, of course, uh, Brave New Sport is, um, is, a, is a study that, it's a qualitative study that we have, um, you know, commissioned with WIRE and we worked on quite intensively over the past one and a half years. Um, I think it's not that typical um, sports study that you would know from like companies like PwC or like. Um, it's really qualitative. Um, it is um, it is visionary. It is it gives a, a broad narrative on where we believe sport could go uh, in the next uh, decades. And we're really looking forward to 30, 40 years, so second half of the 21st century. Um, and the reason why we were doing that is we, be, we were believing and we were kind of using the time of the pandemic to take a step back and and um you know to 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 analyze what's currently happening um i mean the big shifts uh, going on in the industry um on the technological side but also on a societal level um the empowerment of athletes new technologies but also uh, big shifts in the in the way a sport is commercialized consumed and financed and uh, we felt it's about time to um, to look at the broader picture, um, to give a bit of a guidance, and to see what is uh, a desirable future for our sector. Now, the name Brave New Sport is a nod to Aldous Huxley's Brave New World, which will be celebrating 90 years since publication next year. How did you yeah. decide on the title and connecting this book to Aldous Huxley's book? I mean, you're obviously right, and and that was uh, for us. We were, we're re really I think the, the search for the title, Stefan, correct me if I'm wrong, but the search for the title was really um, a long uh, and an intense discussion we had. And um, and I think Brave News Board really came up as a result of a brainstorming. And we were just so convinced, like from the beginning, that title was on the table. Uh, we were convinced that this is something that is eye-catching and uh, but also has, of course, a very nice intellectual component, you know, giving the link to to the um, you know to the book of Aldous Huxley. The big difference, of course, is that I mean, Aldous Huxley is kind of portraying um, you know a dystopian future um, that is not desirable at all. And I think that's but it's also the nice um, you know, I think the, the the nice kind of uh, you know twinkle in the eye or the you know the 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 you know the interesting part of it that we go in a completely different direction with that, um, and uh, we we really hope that. Uh, through this title, more people will will really, uh, you know, take a grip and, and buy the book or, or, you know, read it at the end. Now, Brave New World was extremely controversial. It was even banned in some parts of the world. Is using this title also sort of a way, are you, I mean, is it meant to sort of ruffle the feathers of the sports world as to what may come? I wouldn't necessarily say that. I, of course, it, it has, you know, it's... It, it, it's, it has some kind of disruptive element, but but I think it's also not that disruptive. Uh, but it's um, I think what I like about it also is, is the word brave, and uh, and I think that's one of the central questions that we're asking in the book: How brave do we want to be as an industry uh, moving forward? And um, and this is also a big hook or a good hook for the discussion uh, because it actually. It, it also says something about that you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to be brave uh, and go, you know, in order to go to places where then the magic happens. So I think this is a, you know, if you want to interpret it in that way, this would be more than direction than, you know, just the, the disruption. Um, and of course, we also like the, the kind of intellectual touch we, <laughs> we add to the book through this. 
<laughs> now, this is quite a project to undergo, especially, as you said, we're looking decades ahead. Uh, Stefan, could you walk us through the process of information gathering and how you arrived at the findings that are in the book? Yeah, absolutely. So it was really important for us to um, approach the topic of sports, which, as we all know, is huge um, in a structured manner, because if you don't do that, there is a, a huge risk of just picking out single topics and then um, forgetting some others. Um, so that's actually unique to all the wire projects that we, we start with a clear structure and we use this um, qualitative modeling to come up with new ideas and new scenarios. And basically it starts always with understanding the present. Um, so of course we did a lot of desk research trying to first of all frame the world of sports, look at the different sectors um, that it involves. And we then started different from many other trend studies or books, not with the structure of sports. So looking at football or basketball or, or, or different leagues, but we actually started with the societal functions of sport. Because looking back, um, there has always been a very clear link to what role sports had in the society. So um, the fact that people were throwing spears was not just accidental, it really had uh, a role to play in the function. And in the first place, as mentioned, we, we opened up um, our framework and we're looking at the different um, functions ranging from you know, building communities to, to engage in competition, uh, playfulness, but also health. And then based on, on those, those functions, we were looking at the drivers of change. So I think that's the part that is most classical to um, a usual approach to the future. So quite obviously we were looking at changes that happens through to digitalization, um, societal values with the more individualist uh, society, the aging of the population. So we were trying to have a broad understanding of the different driving forces. And that would lead us in the first place to, well, we called it internally uh, the official future. So the goal was there really to provide um, a holistic overview of all different aspects and not forget something. And then based on that kind of official future, we left the path of, well, the official structure and um, entered a, a broad discussion with, with experts that we've interviewed with, of course, the people from the team of, of Jörg, where we had a lot of discussions. And we were basically trying to make projections based on societal needs. So the innovation that is finally defined, not by something that is possible from a technological point of view. I think this is a big misunderstanding that we currently have, but it actually comes to a value when it brings something back to the users and society. So looking at these challenges, for example, the rise of non-communicable diseases, NCDs um, with diabetes type two and, and people not moving enough is a huge challenge. And then we developed based on the possibilities of technology of the current state of where we are, a scenario that would actually bring a solution to that problem. And in the same way, we developed the other scenarios, looking at the need for more individualized athletes to possibilities to provide them with new fundings. So we ended up with the picture of the more tokenized uh, sponsoring model that um, would actually redefine the structures of sport. So um, it was a very structured approach, but then at a certain point that was also guided by uh, the societal needs. And then of course also um, some part of creativity and out of the box thinking that was then also reflected in the artwork that we used to display the different visions or scenarios. You mentioned your team experts, Jorg's team, who took part in this project? Who were the, the main people involved in terms of uh, the creative thinking and what may lie ahead in building these scenarios? So from our, our side, it was um, it was quite a large team, actually. We, we've been doing a, a lot of similar projects and books, but that was the largest team we've ever had. So there was a project manager who was responsible for also keeping all the different areas uh, together. Um, he was also then the one who would write part of it. Um, we had um, a senior editor 
who has been with us for a very long time. She was actually responsible for the overall storyline and questioning uh, the narratives and the arguments. Then a large part of the book was also written by um, an uh, editor that we work with from London who um, was writing the, um, the, the, the stories to the scenarios. He comes more from a journalistic background and that's, I think you also feel that if you read it, then of course it was myself plus the whole team of WIRE. And then again, there was Jörg's team and the experts. So um, a lot of the, the, the content actually also came up from, from long, long in-depth discussions that we had. So basically we, WIRE would come up with the first idea it was then challenged by Jörg's team. Um, we will come up with the next version. So it was a lot of iterative work that um, also led to a lot of discussions and it was not always an easy process, but we always, uh, we do strongly believe in, um, in that kind of, of challenging that in the end leads to a quality that you don't find in other studies, because as mentioned before, the usual process is you say, well, the world is getting more individualized, so sports will also be more individualized, and that wasn't good enough. And I think the result, once you go through it, shows that there is really um, an in-depth understanding with a differentiated perspective on what's happening. And that was the goal um, to come up with something that is different. You mentioned these scenarios, and these these are bold scenarios based on the predictions. How did those scenarios come to life? Because that's, you know, they're very forward thinking. There's a lot of thought that's put into them. There are these short sort of, sort of stories. How did you bring those to life? Yeah, that's a good point. So basically, it started with, with, with the idea itself. So uh, let's take one of the scenarios when we talk, for example, about the globalized sports market, and of course, the need to scale and, and the, the observations that some clubs already have been reaching international audiences. So if you combine that with the um, trends towards international scaling from, from digital companies, it, w it became clear that um, one of the scenarios should be something like a um, globalized sports in in environment. And then um, we, we, we put in different elements. So we asked, you know, what would it mean for athletes? What would people do? Would it actually be possible that a sports club, a football club could become um, a provider of other services such as healthcare or, or insurance? And based on, on these elements, we then approached the artists who came up with very rough sketches. And then again, it was an iterative process. When we finally saw the image, we would also learn that something we missed or something that needs to be a bit different. And then at the end, um, our uh, colleague from London um, came up with, with a story that, that put the whole thing not only in a just you know, abstract intellectual um, uh, information architecture, but with actually something that, that, that you want to read and that, that makes it also fun to understand. So it was really an, a multidimensional process of turning the ideas into something that is finally and uh, hopefully readable. Now, I want to dive deeper into these findings and I don't know how much you guys want to give away about what's in the book, but what did you kind of discover along the way? Um, is it the one for you or me? I can say, well, um, for both of you, <laughs> um, well, the, the, the book is really, is really broad. And, um, I think for me, it was interesting to, to understand, uh, that the world of sports is enlarging in so many ways and also becoming much more div diversified or differentiated. I mean, we, we see the rise of esports now for many years. And we also are aware that for many people, uh, they're very critical about the true character of, of, of sports, of people sitting behind a computer game. But then again, there's the element of competition, there's the element of playing in teams. So um, I think for me, the first learning was actually this broadness that sports will have and then again the question of what will actually keep it together you know what is the core that still will define whether something might become an olympic discipline or not so that was that was one element the other um was of course also driven by the fact that especially with digital solutions there is a change of hierarchy that, by the way, we've seen happening in media, in, in healthcare, but it is now taking place in sports and basically um, giving much more power to athletes, much more responsibility, but is also putting pressure. 
And then again, the consequence of that is that the athletes alone will not be able to do that. So there's a whole ecosystem of other providers and of course the leagues, um, the trainers, the sponsors uh, that, will, that will need to um, support them. So at the end, it's really um, a process where have started that, that, that will need a large ecosystem to actually make sure that the added value that is created economically, but also looking back into the core of society can also all only be leveraged if we have that broader understanding. And, and, and just looking at the single points, the single developments, a robot here or uh, a VR technology there, that's not good enough. That's just one small element of this bigger picture. And Jorg, how about you? Well, from, from our end, it was, I think also the, the journey that we took together with WIRE contained some of the biggest learnings here because, um, and, and we, we really involved, uh, let's say half of, of our management team here. So when, when Stefan talks about my team, that's actually, is really also our also CEO, Philipp Latter and, and many colleagues here from, from the management team who, who gave input. It echoes a bit what, what Stefan said before, the, the discussion has revealed such a vast, um, you know, uh, playing field that um, that we really had to take a, also a long time to, to structure the thoughts. And we also spent quite a long time to discuss the bold scenarios because there, there were so many different aspects to it that um, yeah, it was it was at one point even overwhelming and um, and for me the the biggest learning here about that was that it, it really is worthwhile effort to to do that deep dive and take a bit of a longer perspective also in order to kind of um, you know be able to to better um, assess or or also you know, to you know assess current technologies and current trends what they're going on where they can lead um, so this is very enlightening and it's also the some of the feedbacks that we have received uh, yesterday during the launch, the people came back to us and said, hey, hey, when you gave me the book first, it was like, whoo, this is broad. And, and, you know, we really, you know, where are you going with this? But then they said, hey, but when you really dive into it and how it's built up and we spend also a lot of time to, to really build that kind of drama and, and, and this kind of logic in, the, in uh, the red line, so to speak, in the book, um, there is value which is kind of then culminating in these bold scenarios that are, you know, they are, they are intentionally, they are disruptive. You know, this is really the, the discussion we had about robot fights being a future um, kind of format for sport that really is, divides audiences. Despite the fact that it's just an extension of esports, if you want, it's just uh, esports become physical with these kind of robot sports. And of course, we are portraying these big machines somewhere in desert in the book. But of course, at the end of the day, we are more talking about you know actual esports players which are playing their esports in a physical way through robots or through machines. Let's say. Other than that, I mean, overall, the conclusion, and I think Stefan also touched upon it for us, is that the book really highlights the value of sport in society and, and the, the, the immense transformative potential it has. You know, it, it really indicates that there is a next generation of sport that needs to be put on the radar and um, that, that can be, if it's kind of managed in the right way or also directed in the right way, has has the potential to even raise the importance of sport as a societal power and, and factor moving forward because it integrates an awful lot of um, yeah, aspects of, of daily life from infrastructure through entertainment. Of course, it's still a big, big entertainment uh, form of entertainment, but also how, you know, redefining how humans interact with each other, but also with machines and technology moving forward. Now, is there anything from the book that really shocked you, that made you kind of step back and say, whoa, will we actually be able to do that one day? Or on the opposite side, whoa, do we want to be able to actually do that one day? Stefan, maybe we'll start with you. Yeah, absolutely. There were a lot of these topics. I mean, Jörg briefly mentioned um, before the topic of, of, of robot-driven sports, which um, has been an emotional topic already so far because uh, in the first place, you're actually taking humans out of the equation, which is always a, a critical issue. Um, in the second level, as he mentioned, um, it was clear uh, very soon that it wouldn't just be machines, it's always the man-machine interaction, but we have another scenario looking into human enhancements. 
um, which is, of course, um, through uh, doping, of course, a, a huge topic in sports that has not been solved. And one of the very provocative ideas, of course, was that we would actually use medical progress um, in a controlled way uh, to actually uh, find new limits, uh, but in a controlled environment. But again, combining technology with, um, in that case, medical um, innovation. And that, of course, is controversial to a high degree uh, because it's out of the scope of, 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 of um, what was possible. And when we discussed the different scenarios, we also had one of the ideas was actually um, a world where you completely move away from technology, but that would also mean you would be running without shoes because we've been seeing that some of the shoes that athletes use, they're, they're, they're making them much faster. So where's the boundary um, to actually enhancement and when it's ethic, on, from an ethical perspective, not something that we want. And I think there's not an official... Um, hard line that we can draw it's something that we need to define as a society and again sports would actually be on the forefront to uh, define these questions because cloning in many ways is a reality also for humans and sooner or later we will be confronted with these kind of questions to what degree will we use medical innovation to um, optimize our health um, our ability to learn to, to to work and 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 this is again the reason why we took the scenario because it will be something that we will have to discuss as a society and sport can now help to answer these questions. Njorga, we'll call it your, uh, your whoa moment. What was your whoa, can we do that moment? <laughs> yeah, um, I think for me, the, the biggest wow moment was, was the one where I realized that even the most shocking scenarios we were portraying are already part of today's DNA in sport. You know, there, it's nothing. And it's, it's also in the, in the discussion, you constantly come to the point where you say, okay, we talk about, you know, the use of AI and how for, for you know, for player scouting. But even, you know, we started one and a half years back to work on the book. And even in these one and a half years, these kind of first idea for the bold scenarios became much more real than they were one and a half years. So the other aspect of that wow moment is, is the, the immense speed of development that's currently in the market, which makes it even more important that we discuss these topics now, because they are, you know, otherwise we are, we're just losing the plot. I mean, the, 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 you know, the speed of innovation and advancement is incredibly high. And um, what people would deem totally unthinkable, just a couple of years, years later, is totally normal. So we better get our stuff together and 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 you know start you know really actively also designing some of these aspects and also you know not just being led by opportunistic behavior and say oh there's a there's a new technology what can we do with it i think of course that can lead to something but we have we have the opportunity to to you know to make things or to push things more in that direction we feel they they are desirable and, and not every trend out there is worthwhile jumping on and now stefan how do the trends that you recognize for sports compare to trends in other industries is there a similar trajectory or do sports take their own path in the future yeah, that's a good question. I think from the general trends we were looking at, I think a lot of them are broader developments that we see that uh, do apply to sports. And um, the goal of the study was, as mentioned before, also to have this broad approach. So we were actually more interested or mostly interested to, to see from a broader perspective what, for example, a trend that you wouldn't necessarily connect to sports, um, let's say, the shortage of, 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 uh, of natural resources or something, what would be um, a possible consequence? Uh, and then I think um, the more concrete we applied it to the different um, areas of sport and also in the scenarios, we've been looking at different sports times from, from football to, to, um, uh, to, to polo and, and many others. Um, that was uh, the, the point where it became much more concrete and also um, unique to, uh, to the sports world. But again, I think one of the characteristic, and that's also makes it so important for, for different industries to, to, to collaborate or at least to exchange ideas is that we do see similar developments. 
uh, again, when we take the trend of, for example, tokenization, which does empower individual artists with NFTs or give new sources for influencers, that's something that is now uh, happening in sports as well, or the general question of how we, we distribute content on a personalized level, um, uh, where we have developed one um, scenario as something like a Sportify platform. There is a lot of similarities where we can learn from other experience, from other industries, and also uh, bring these knowledge that knowledge back. And uh, your obviously a big part of the book is also about generating this discussion uh, within the sports world. But what is it that you're looking to accomplish with this book and these findings? Well, we, actually, what we're trying to accomplish is to foster that dialogue about the future and to, I mean, the book is really, let's say, our contribution to that discussion. We also take no ownership in what's happening next. I mean, we, of course, we, we have certain ideas um, how we want to, um, you know, structure the discussion and we will make, um, you know, we will kind of lead with a, with a stakeholder dialogue that, uh, of course, will involve uh, additional deep dives. We have uh, set up, uh, you know, different digital platforms, including dedicated website, but also, of course, on social media, a lot of stuff is going on um, where we uh, where we really want to engage with the audiences and and actively ask them for contributions. There will also be, you know, polls and, and, and questionnaires and what have you. Um, in addition, uh, as part of that if you want to call it activation, um, we we want to we really reach out actively to the to our core stakeholders, our clients and partners, um, and and you know have different discussions with them in different platforms, so we can we can really see and we already have that feedback also from some clients that they might use uh, the book for visioning processes when in, as part of the, the you know strategy developments, but we can also see things like just entertaining discussion formats. Um, you know, we are now back in the stadiums, we're back in the hospitality areas. So why not have a panel discussion in the hospitality area where everyone is there anyway, and we can have an interesting discussion, um, still can have a beer next to it, no problem. Um, it's part of our future, definitely. Uh, so um, so yeah, th these, these are the, the directions we're taking. But what's important here is that and this is where our biggest commitment is actually coming from is that we are we really committed to to collect all these inputs to consolidate them with the basic question in mind what is a desirable future for sport um and um and we will give that back to the to the industry um in a year's time probably somewhere around the fifa world cup um and you know also share these insights again with the industry because we are really we have no whatsoever um, well no commercial interest of course uh, but also no no intellectual um, aspiration to to kind of contain that thought building process um, within corporate boundaries. So the book was already launched, and now that we've uh, piqued the audience interest, where can they find it? So the, the easiest access is, of course, the dedicated website. It's bravenew.sport. There you find all the information and also access um, for uh, yeah, where, you can, where you can acquire the book. We uh, have the hashtag bravenewsport to, to accompany that. And otherwise, uh, our corporate um, social media platforms uh, under the handle Infront Sport, in particular LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Instagram are other places to go for. Yeah, these are the main outlets. And um, when, when we have events, we will announce them, of course. Well, Jörg, Stefan, absolutely fascinating. Uh, and I really do advise everyone to, to read this book because I already had the chance to do so. And if you're a sports lover, you're going to sit there and you're going to be enthralled by these, uh, these bold scenarios that we've been talking about. So, gentlemen, it was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Pleasure as well. Thank you, Mero. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Here we go. That wraps up this episode of The Mix Zone by Infant X Lab. You can follow us on LinkedIn and be in touch with our team for more information about sports tech solutions. Just shoot us an email at lab at infantx.com. We'll see you next time.